Then in the highway specifications, we have 10 committees. And in H3 and H4, my colleagues who are working in RV Associates are also committee members. Bridge specifications, there are 10. And then B9, which is specialized bridge structures, including ceilings. Our structures head is leading the committee. Now coming back to the so-called issues and the lessons to learn. The main problems that the construction, the, uh, regarding the ambiguities, let me talk about the ambiguities first. We are revising the manuals, the two-lane manual, four-lane manual, six-lane manual, they are being revised. In that, you have cross-sectional elements, pavement design, various things are there. But they have some mother codes also. Like two-lane manual, four-lane manual, six-lane manual, they have mother codes, IRC 37, IRC 58, and uh, SP 23, IS 73, all those. But those are not being revised. So there is actually a conflict already. So the mother codes have to be revised. Second problem that we face is applicability of these revisions. Generally, a contractor or a concessionaire, he is supposed to follow those codes which are in practice, which are published 60 days prior to the date of submission of the bid. But after the bid submission, some code comes up. In fact, it is required. Some deficiency was identified in the previous code and it is revised. But because it is not applicable to that particular project, they don't use it. How far it is correct? Because you have contractual implication, we should not use it. So, whether if it is technically feasible and desirable, then we must do it, like signage. Many of the contracts, they follow 2001, but 2010 has come. But still people want to use, in the sense, people want to use in the sense sometimes, client also says, why I should go for any change of scope. So this should not be there. Any change, any revision should be immediately made applicable to the project and then if there is any contractual implication, that should be paid as a change of scope. Then the third issue is circulars and schedules. Circulars are continuously being uh, issued by ministry or NHA based on whatever they learn during the course of execution. But there is no mention of these circulars in the manuals that we have. Manual is a contractually binding document. So a circular comes and we say as consultants or authority that you must follow the circular. But there is no mention in the document. They say we will not follow. So this should be addressed. We should have a priority set and it should be written in the building document. Schedule B versus Schedule D. Schedule B is the scope of project and Schedule D is the specification by which you are supposed to execute this project. It is amply clear to everyone, but in number of places, because every, every PAU or every uh, implementation unit is headed by a different person. He might have joined recently in that particular position. He might have come from other department, which is, not a, which is a non highway department. So he has to start learning. So I will go to that. But this thing should be made clear that Schedule B prevails over Schedule D. I will simply give you an, ex uh, an example. Schedule D says that you have to construct the toll plaza like this. All the other things have to be uh, done like this, ATMS, X, Y, Z. But in Schedule B, it is not written that you have to construct a toll plaza in the first place. So if toll plaza is not there in Schedule B, why should they construct it? So that is a glaring example of Schedule B scope versus specifications. Then one very important thing that we face always is extension of savings. These are all DB, DBF 40 or BOT projects where design responsibility is with the concessionaire. Some drawings are given to them based on feasibility, based on DPRs, fine, but we also tell them you can always modify them. But then when he modifies certain thing, we say whatever you are saving, please give it to us. That clause is not there in the contract on one side. But still, we ask them. Codal revisions are there. We don't. If we if we do that, suppose a pile diameter. Now you can change it to say 1.2 meters. 
but we will not allow them. If he, if he, do, if he does that, then that savings, if at all anything is there, it has to be extended. If a PUP is modified to VUP or VUP is modified to PUP, that time it is very clear that savings has to be extended. But when there is a design innovation or design optimization, you should not ask the concessionaire to give the savings. But there is no clear cut provision in the contract. Then hundreds of projects are being executed day in and day out by NHAI. Hundreds of issues are being dealt by the cons consultants. But those consultant, those issues are dealt by that particular PAU. When it comes to a new PAU, the issue starts all over again. They don't know what is happening in the other PAU. So there should be, all these issues should be resolved across the projects. I have just listed a couple of issues here. It's a mixed crowd. Whether I'll be able to go into details of these issues or not, I'm not sure. That's why I have just highlighted them. Side distance a major cause of change of scope, major cause of change of scope. The courts say that we have to follow ISD, but the DPR consultants, they would have followed SSD for various reasons, for cutting the costs, the length of the service roads are reduced, the length of the RE wall is reduced, and the drains are reduced. So when, when as an independent engineer, or when an, as an engineer, when we want to tell them, follow ISD, they say this is this and we don't want to give the change of scope. So like this, many issues are there, like height of the embankment, height of embankment, HFL. We face this issue everywhere, but then every project has to deal it separately. I am running about 40 projects, and in every project I have dealt separately. There is communication between the uh, PAU and the RO and back and forth, and then RO and CGM uh, uh, headquarters back and forth, and it goes on, and goes on till COD. Anti-corrosive treatment, FBEC, that has been removed, various options were given, but still FBEC is being insisted in some of the places. There can be a common resolution for this. Converted bitumen, VG40, recently we had a workshop on IRC 37 in Delhi. After uh, so many heads meeting also, we could not resolve whether converted bitumen should be accepted by the industry, by the consultant. We could not resolve. Wide road crash barrier. These are all uh, known to those people who are working on this. Variation in scope of ROBs. We still don't know. Generally, in the scope, it is written that span and other configuration will be as per the department. And as uh, in consultation with the department. Fine. In Schedule B, you have given 30 meters. The department says it is 100 meters. It is fine. But I should be given additional money for that. It is not written that it should be free of cost. So like this, various issues are there. Certainly these issues can be discussed when I am in lunch or otherwise. These you might be knowing anyway. Entry exit ramps. They are there in codes, manuals, DPRs, everywhere. But show me one entry exit ramp where it is. 